our customers can compete with anyone when it comes to hyperscale and efficient hardware. How do you lead that? Number one reason a company fails is they don't get market transitions. Absolutely. I think the industry is going through a tremendous transformation. So, so Krishna, it's really nice to meet you today. You work for a fantastic company. Um, tell me, what's your job title at LinkedIn? I am uh, part of a global infrastructure architecture and strategy team. Uh, I, I, uh, my title is the infrastructure architect. Oh, wow. For, That's, and how, LinkedIn. how long have you been doing that at LinkedIn? Uh, it's just completed four months now. Oh, has it been a baptism of fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic journey so far. Yeah, is there, I mean, I imagine that the data center um, infrastructure or is, is pretty extensive at LinkedIn and, and growing all the time. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we just crossed 400 uh, million users. I did, yes. That uh, brings a lot of, uh, you know, the requirements on the infrastructure. Yeah. My, uh, my role as well as our group role essentially to power our, uh, our company's vision, which mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, you know, economic graph. Mm -hmm. uh, provide economic opportunity for every uh, working force on the planet. Right. That, uh, that, that tells so much about, you know, what kind of infrastructure we need underneath to power that kind of a vision. Right? Yeah. So it's all about agility, speed, and, uh, you know, the cost effectiveness in, in realizing this journey. Do you find that in addition to the cost, performance, and reliability metrics that you are now being pushed into a role as a business strategist mm -hmm. in terms of how does LinkedIn develop new revenues on those 400 million users? So that uh, that, that factor comes uh, you know, on top of what the infrastructure we build, right? Uh, our job primarily is uh, powering that applications what we have. Uh, you know, for example, uh, when you log into your profile, mm. that profile page uh, is uh, actually serviced by hundreds of server, uh, services underneath, uh, which would be running on these all uh, infrastructure we are building. Mm. Right? You know, it's a crown jewel of the company. You of know, course. all the member data and uh, how we can, you know, extract a more meaningful information to you know go back and provide uh, enable our our uh, our members. Right? Yeah. You know. You will see a lot of uh, information flowing on that particular pro profile page. Yeah, we've seen a lot of the large um, sort of web scale companies, and I would consider LinkedIn a web scale company. Just throw the rule book out. They've said, "Well, we, we don't need to buy hardware from Dell or uh, you know, or from uh, uh, the regular providers. We can build our own hardware for servers, maybe even for switches. We can develop our own networking software. Obviously, Netflix is a classic example of developing software for." For, for, for video services, what's LinkedIn's philosophy, if you will, of, of build or buy when it comes to the data center? So we are, we are trying it out all scenarios. It's not like a, today, if you look at our infrastructure, uh, it is a combination of uh, white boxes, a combination of vendor equipment. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be uh, all white boxes, it's not going to be all you know, the vendor equipment. But uh, one factor is there, uh, which is the DNA of all web scale companies, uh, uh, challenge the uh, conventional stuff. Yeah. Right? You know, uh, ability to get to the next level. Um, you know, there is a very nice blog, you know, public blog. You can see um, about the LinkedIn, LinkedIn scaling history. Right. It is mind boggling to read that blog. You know, yeah. it starts from a very simple, uh, you know, the client server application uh, growing it to a massive, you know, cloud architecture. Mm. This all requires, uh, you know, uh, very fast and adapting to any new technologies. Mm. Uh, if some technology doesn't uh, fit your bill, you know, don't afraid to uh, take a leap of uh, build your own. Mm. You know, that's the DNA of the company. Yeah. Right? Uh, um, the, the culture is, in a way, to take the risks. And try it out to new innovations. What, so, so but what what's driving you to take risks when you don't have any competition? It is not about uh, it's not about the competition only drives the you know innovation, uh, ability to provide more uh, more services to your mm. members. You know uh, that itself is the you know the power behind it. Yeah. Right? You know 
it is unbelievable to see uh, how many new features we add uh, in our daily basis. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not like a classic waterfall model. It's uh, more of an agile nature. Yeah. Try it out and see whether uh, your members like it. If, yeah. they th if not, you know, don't have to go back or change it. You yeah. know, that's the kind of agility what uh, what is required, uh, you know, underneath. So yeah. quite quite aggressive. So Very sort of aggressive. beyond waterfall just short of cowboy, yes. but firmly in agile yes, in terms yes. of the development environment. Yes. That's that's really interesting. I, is open source important to LinkedIn? Yes, uh, huge. You know, yeah. in fact, uh, uh, LinkedIn contributed many number of uh, projects to open source. So one of the uh, name comes to my mind is the Kafka. It's yes. a very successful open source uh, project. There are many other uh, you know projects like that. Yeah. It's not only consumer of the open source initiatives, but uh, uh, enabler of uh, open source projects also. You know, yeah. Yes, that's part of the DNA. Yeah. Um, do you think that um, you know companies like LinkedIn and other uh, web scale companies, and I would include Google and Amazon, um, you know, who have built these huge public clouds? I mean, essentially, you're the the next generation of service provider. Um, there's been a, a big debate going on over whether the existing tier one service providers can survive um, into the future when they have public cloud providers like Google and Amazon, you know, really entering their space. What do you think? Do you think the tier one providers will survive, or do you think they're going to get shunted out of the core? But I think uh, uh, service providers are providing the connectivity within the data center. Probably that is owned by the uh, you know cloud providers, mm. but when it connects, when it comes to connecting out uh, various uh, geographically distributed, we we have you know many different uh, data centers mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so many pops, mm. right? You know these are the colos. You now that the colos are all provided by you know various service providers. Yeah, I don't think they will they will you know disappear. disappear. Yeah, you know, the, the everybody will have a, you know a role to play. You yeah. know. They have to adjust to this changing world yeah. uh, somewhat to, to see how faster they could enable their customers, right? Uh, in terms of uh, bringing down the cost, bringing down yeah. the agility aspects of it. Yeah. Right? Everybody has to, you know, up level their value proportion to the next level. I right? think I think that's really interesting, and it it, it mirrors something that um, Carol Wilson, the editor at large at Light Reading, told me yesterday. Because I've started trying to crush the OSI model down into as few levels as possible, and I got it down to four. And then I was thinking of eliminating <laughs> the second one, which I was calling bandwidth. And she was like, No, 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 no. That <laughs> becomes the net of nets, like the the co-location, yeah. uh, the interconnection of all of those networks actually becomes a business model. Yeah. Yes. And uh, you know, and that's not a core business model to LinkedIn, but it is to the existing service providers. So that's where a lot of uh, it's not a technology story per se, um, though it takes place in a technology universe in the data center. But it's certainly an interesting business story. How fast? How fast we could uh, connect our users to our uh, our services? Yeah, that's that's all it boils down to. Yeah. Right? Uh, what is required to you know uh, to reduce that latency required? Right? Yeah. You know. We measure uh, our you know, every aspects of the page loads, uh, various services responses uh, to the to the seconds. You know yeah. Uh, yeah. how we are doing week by week basis, the daily basis. You know mm -hmm. this is all. Uh, you know comes. You know the, the when when uh, uh, service providers comes together. You know it, uh, enabling these services faster. That's yeah. that's very important for you know the success of absolutely you know, uh, either side. I, I think next year, I mean this year everybody's talking about NFV, last year everybody was talking about SDN, I think next year everybody's going to be talking about cloud, yeah. but also security. Does you know some of these huge security break-ins that have been happening uh, around the world, does that keep you awake at night? Yeah, sure. You know, yeah. That's uh, always the case. What's your philosophy on that? How do you, how do you prevent that happening at LinkedIn, because that would be just, you know, end of days level of disaster with 400 million of the most high you know highly valued demographic users on the planet right yeah. i'm not a security security expert okay. but uh, we have a very talented security yeah. team and it's obviously a, a huge focus of, yeah to take care of that part yeah aspect. okay this is a really a pleasure to to meet you i mean big fan obviously a user 
you know, you were at 3,999,999, but then, then I joined, so now you've got 400 million. <laughs> so it's lucky I did join when I did, yeah. you know, premium user, obviously. Yeah. So really Glad a pleasure to, to meet you. Thank you very much for Thank it. you. Really appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs>